Right here, you're taking a look at my favorite tractor. This is my Ford N series. I can't specify that it's either an eight or nine because it's a little bit of both. The front end is a nine, the back end is an eight. There's plenty of two parts on it. So I like to call it my 19 N plus. So for hooking up this mower deck, we're gonna want this draw bar out of the way. Then we're gonna take the cover of the PTO off. I keep that cover on there because the PTO is gonna spin anytime that you're using your uh, three-point lifts, and I just don't like a PTO out there spinning around, catching clothes or whatever. So this item here is called an overrun clutch. If you're running any older tractor that does not have a two-stage clutch on it, you're gonna want this for any PTO-attached item that carries inertia over when you push your uh, clutch down. This is going to allow the brush deck to continue spinning without pushing your drive wheels while you're still in gear. This can be a bit of a lifesaver. I do take this off anytime that I do not have a PTO item that I need to run with it on. I don't like the fact that I can't put the PTO cover on while the overrun clutch is on. So since I need it, I'm putting it on. When I'm done with this deck, I will be taking it off. This hole right here on your PTO, it's important that you find that and you line all of this up. That right there is what you're going to mash a roll pin into. So you slide that in. Now you can see down and through. That's what you're looking for. Grab this roll pin here and drive that sucker in. And that's uh, step one for this process. Then you're going to want to use a punch. Make sure that you've got that roll pin so that it's just into the PTO, but it's not on your outer shell of the overrun clutch. You're going to turn your grease zerks in then, and those grease zerks are basically going to seal everything up, make sure that roll pin doesn't walk itself out. And then this device here, I only grease it every two or three times I use it. It holds grease pretty well, it doesn't dry out, so I try not to over grease it. I don't like it to get too messy when I go to take it on and off. They've usually got these on the shelf at Tractor Supply. You can get them on eBay, you can get them on Amazon. There's, as long as it's for a 540 PTO, it'll fit any older machine that you might have this problem with. So now when that brush deck is spinning and you push the clutch in, you can stop the drive axle and the brush deck can continue to spin without trying to force your drive axles forward or backwards depending on the direction you were going when you push the clutch down. That's it. Makes it much safer machine to run. If anybody out there has got an easier way to attach three-point attachments without all this jiggling and fussing and pushing everything around to get all these things to line up, let me know in the comments because I don't have any better way than this. I'm going to fire up the machine, and I'm going to put these chains up here in the top link connector point. And that's uh, going to get us most of the way there to getting this hooked up. Make sure your PTO is engaged on this machine, and when you fire it up, you got your three-point controls. Lift the machine up to where you're comfortable with. This is the only kind of not safest aspect of how I hook this machine up, because I need to leave it running like this, because it does drift a little as soon as it's shut down. But I'll take these chains, put them in the top link connector, and then I don't use a top link when I run my deck. I let it float this way with this setting, 
It lets the deck move independent from the tractor, but it still keeps a consistent height. Right, there's it, you let the deck down, and now my height is set. Those chains are set for this tractor, so I don't have to readjust them each time I hook it up. And then uh, once the machine's off, the PTO's not spinning, I hook up the PTO and I'm all ready to mow. I don't know if anybody hooks stuff up different. I've seen a few different ways to hook things up, but I find this works best for me. I store my deck sitting on wooden blocks, so I lift it up a little like this as I pull it away just so that I don't drag those wooden blocks with me. I set it back down and now we're mowing. So we're going to take off to one of the pastures and do just a little bit of mowing, make sure the deck runs as good as I remember it mowing when I put it away. But if anybody's watching this and you're enjoying it or getting something useful out of it, consider hitting the like button. If you've watched a couple of my videos and you're enjoying it or getting something useful out of it, consider subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate it. Well, that's enough mowing. I figure I'll show everybody how I put my uh, support arm on the side of this mower deck. If I'm doing a lot of fields that have a lot of angles to them, and I'm, the slope, I'm going counter to the slope so the deck wants to sway to the left or the right fairly heavily, I do have an anti-sway bar that I've made that I've put on this deck. It is made out of plow blade. It is pretty heavy. It's very sturdy, but I find that those thin strap steel ones that you get from Tractor Supply like to, I don't know, bend, flex a little bit. They don't really hold the deck as straight as I like. So, 
This right here has just got a hole cut on either end. I kind of ground it down a little so it's not too thick. And it keeps that deck from swaying left to right a lot when I'm mowing hillsides and stuff. So I thought maybe somebody here would appreciate seeing that, so I threw it in. So that's all I got for you today. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good one.